Hi gorgeous, I am Flavio Miguel and welcome to my channel, but maybe that's your first time over here. If that's the case, thank you so much for tuning in. In this video, I'll be reviewing and demonstrating a foundation that it's been dominating the market for quite a while. I'm talking about the best sold foundation amongst a lot of companies portfolio. And yes, I'm talking about the double wear, stay in place, makeup by still other companies. But let me first get one thing straight. This isn't a sponsored video, neither I got this foundation for free. I actually spend my own money because I want to give you the real deal. And no, I'm not enlisted in the PR team of still other companies. This might change in the future, but for this time, that's what you're going to get. All right. But what is exactly that I'm going to be doing? I'll be evaluating its coverage, finish, wear performance, oxidation, waterproofing and skincare benefits. I will also be comparing their claims with my own experience while wearing the product. I'll be also taking in consideration the number of available shades as well as its price. And I'll be also checking if it's clean, cruelty free and vegan. So there's a lot for us to talk about. Keep it up. But before we go on, let me talk a little bit about my own skin type. I do have a combined skin type with a T-zone that it's slightly more oily in comparison with the surroundings of my face. But my skin is also dehydrated. I also have a skin that varies a lot throughout the year. For example, when it's winter time, my skin tends to be even more dehydrated. And when it's summertime, because of the humidity and high temperature, my skin tends to produce more sebum, which makes it slightly more oily, although it is still dehydrated. What type of foundation I like to wear on myself? When I'm searching for a foundation for myself, not for my kids, but for myself, I tend to search for foundations that are seamless, with the easy buildable aspect of the coverage, because I do tend to be quite self-conscious when I'm wearing foundation. Not that I mind people see me wearing makeup. Well, if you watch other videos of myself, you understand that I really don't mind. So, but when it comes to wear foundation on a daily basis, I prefer to have a foundation which is seamless. So. This is how it looks inside of the box, outside of the box. My first impression is that it's very compact, it's a very small packaging and although you have here 30 ml, which is the average of all the foundations that I've been uh, testing uh, to this moment, I did use the Stellar technology on their website to try to find the perfect skin match for my face and the color that they advised me on their website is the 3 N1, which stands for ivory beige, right? Ivory beige. Um, this foundation contains an SPF 10. I'm not sure what I think about an SPF and a foundation because I do think it can give a wrong sense of uh, protection because as you know, you have to reapply it every other time. And once you have your foundation on, it's quite complicated to reapply your sun protective factor on it. And especially at sun protective and SPF 10, it's quite low if we consider it. So I do think it can be quite misleading the idea that you have sun protection factor on your foundation. I would strongly advise you to try to find other ways to sunblock, such as a higher, um, a higher sun protective factor that you could use in a form of a primer for example but you could also might you might as well also wear some hats and really seeking the shade every other time just keeping in mind that and sun protection factor 10 offers barely any kind of protection okay but without any further ado i'm gonna try this on i have never tried double wear in my entire life although i did work for still other companies for about 12 years i know i didn't try before why because i was wearing other foundations also from the portfolio of still other and so but i read so many good reviews about this product and it's not for nothing that is the best sold 
foundation among stellar other companies portfolio so keep in mind that stellar other companies has a lot of brands under their portfolio among them Clinique and Mac as well and even though this is still the best sold foundation among stellar other companies without any further ado I'm just gonna do my face all right it doesn't say anywhere shake well whatsoever but now because we've been doing this in the past let's shake it very well okay all right so i'm very very curious to try this foundation all right so if there is no pump or whatsoever here you just have to screw it out this should be easy to measure huh? i mean all right if you've watched all the videos that i've posted i hope you did otherwise if you don't that's the link here up click on it you can see my videos that I posted before of other foundations reveal but if you've watched it then and I hope you did you would see that I've been using this kind of brush to apply the foundations why because as other foundations that I've revealed before, the Double Wear Foundation has a buildable coverage. This is one of their claims. It's a medium to full coverage buildable. So when I use this stippling brush, this helps me to have a more control about the buildable aspect of the foundation. So that's what I'm doing here. My first impression when I just look at here at this foundation, it does look very, it does look very yellow. And I don't have a yellow undertone, although, well, this is the foundation that they advise me, the color that they advise me on their website. So let's hope for the best. look a little bit yellow on the mixing palette applying right now on my skin it blends quite nicely on my skin tone I don't know how it's showing up on camera but for what I can see it's fragrance free I can tell though it does smell very like how can I say I don't want to say chemical but it does smell very pharmaceutic if I could call it like that maybe I just made up a word but let's do this as I've done in other reviews in the past, I'm not going to apply foundation on this area, on my ears, because I do want to see if it's going to perfectly match my skin tone. And I also want to check if this is going to oxidize, because if it does oxidize, it's going to change the color somehow. So this is going to be a nice way to try to see if there's any difference on the color, okay? On this, on this side, I will apply it, because I always apply it on my ears as well. So this is how the foundation looks like on its own and I try to apply a very sheer layer on my face. As you can see I still have like more than half of the product that I've sampled on my palette. As you can see I, I went very very sheer which is something that I'm really liking it and my first impression here is that it gives this very nice natural matte finish. I do still see some transparency on the skin on the top of my nose so on that area I'm just gonna go and try to to create slightly more coverage because I don't like to see all this redness over there on its own without something else I haven't put any concealer I haven't put any powder didn't contour my face either highlighted yet but my first impressions it's working quite nicely I cannot complain so far so good let's go on it okay right now I'm just gonna apply some concealer very minimal because <laughs> lucky enough my face is looking all right today although I can see right here it does look slightly I don't want to say cakey but I think that's the best word to describe what I'm seeing here this side is like more natural and less overly done but let's 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 go for it concealer so this is just with the concealer what I can tell it does it does feel a little bit dry should I say that it does feel a little bit dry I mean not and um, not yet until the moment that it does feel uncomfortable but in comparison with other foundations that I've tried before this feels quite oil controlling but let's go let's go I'm gonna now contour my face 
If you want to know all the products that I'm using that I'm not mentioning in this video, you can go on the description below and you can find everything that I'm using. All right, so this is how my skin is looking like right after finishing the foundation application. What have I done? So I applied the foundation. I did use some concealer right there and here and next to the nose wings. I also did contour my face um, and I also set it using a contouring powder. I didn't use a bloating powder to set the foundation and the reason is, is because a bloating powder tends to oil control your foundation or your skin if you will and this foundation it is already quite oil controlling as i told you in the beginning my skin the application the foundation feels quite dry on my skin although it is still not that uncomfortable to the point that i'm gonna go like oof i'm not sure about it i did set everything using nyx cosmetics fixing spray with the matte finish and for what I can tell, it does look quite nice on my skin, to be very honest. It looks a little bit tan, but it's, I think, redder because of all the other products that apply on my face, not as much as the non-matching color on my skin, which I think it did match quite well. So for the matching technology on their website, pretty well done. But, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, uh, I have to record more content for other stuff i will go on through it i finished the application you know, just now like five minutes ago which and it's now 2 45 in the afternoon so let's see how this is going to be reacting until the end of this video okay so hold on it's been six hours since i last recorded something for this video but before we go on let me just put something more comfortable hold on Yes, that's much better. How do you like it, my look now? I mean, well, I was recording for this mascara that I cannot tell you yet from which brand it is because it's still officially not launched. And that is this lipstick also something that is still not being launched. So I cannot tell you right now what it is. If you want to hear it and know what it is, then you should just follow me. Hit the follow button and you'll be knowing, all right? But let's go on, okay? Well, we are heading to the last part of this review. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna be sharing with you their claims, everything that they claim this product does. And then I'll be sharing my own experience while wearing this product. And I'll be giving some score based upon coverage, finish, wear performance, oxidation, waterproofing, transfer proof, whatever they claim to be. And by the end of this part, I'll be calculating what is the final average score of this foundation and after that i'll be giving my final conclusion about what i think of the double wear by stella other okay the double wear foundation is a liquid form with a matte finish that is designed to last for 24 hours with 55 shades available the brand aims to offer options for a wide range of skin tones this foundation is waterproof and oil free promise to provide non-creasing sweat and humidity resistant coverage that won't settle into the lines or pores. The formula has been tested by dermatologists and it's free of synthetic fragrance, gluten and various harmful ingredients. Additionally, it's claimed to be transfer resistant and to control oil throughout the day while not causing breakouts. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Okay, well, some other facts about this foundation. The Double Wear Foundation was launched in 1997. 1997. So it's been in the market for 25 years. Oh my lord, I didn't even realize that it was in the market for so long. One of the things that I can tell it is the best sold foundation among the Stellauder company's portfolio. Yes, and if you know Stellauder, you know that Stellauder owns MAC Cosmetics, Clinique, Bobbi Brown, among others. So to top all of those brands, that, that, that should mean something, okay? Um, okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through their claims in each category and I'm gonna give my feedback and I'm gonna give already my final score for the foundation. Let's talk about first the coverage. So the claims, the claim says that it is a buildable coverage from medium to full coverage. And for what I can tell, you saw that for what I poured on my mixing palette, 
uh, there was still a lot left. And I had the idea that I was being able to build high coverage with very minimal amount of product. When it comes to coverage, I am gonna, I, I, I have to, I have to give a 10 to this because it was very easy to apply. I could see that I was being able to create sheer coverage without looking it too cakey. But apart for this part over here in the beginning, but if I look at right now, it's not that bad, really. Seriously, not that bad. I'm gonna give a 10 for this for this part. Well, when it comes to finish, it provides a matte finish. Matte finish, okay, and from the moment that I finished recording the, the foundation application up to now, I did not apply powder on my face after that. I did it on purpose. What have I done in meanwhile? I, well, I had to walk my dog, I did vacuum, in the living room and I did go shopping to buy my dinner but I haven't done something too crazy to try to see how this would perform what I can tell is that the finish that I see right now at this very moment feels natural and almost almost towards the setting so it's not as matte as I wish it could be. When it comes to the finishing, I think I'm gonna have to give a, a seven and a half. Why a seven and a half? Because I just told you, the claim says that it delivers a matte finish, but after five hours without retouching the powder on my face, it is looking like this, the way you see, right? So yes, I'm gonna give a seven, seven and a half. All right, when it comes to wear performance, like I told you, I haven't done something too crazy today. It says that it doesn't go into the lines and for what I can tell it really doesn't it really doesn't I don't think it, it's moving a lot I don't think it did become transparent underneath my eyes at least I don't see a lot of coloration over there so when it comes to wear performance I think I'm gonna have to give I'm gonna give a nine for the wear performance all right when it comes to oxidation remember that I did not apply over here and I still haven't applied over here. I don't have the feeling that it did oxidize that much, for what I can tell. And from the moment that I applied the foundation to now, it looks pretty much my own skin tone. So I don't think the oxidation was that bad, really, because first of all, it was the color matching was based upon the automatic tool that they have on their website and I apply and this has been six hours and to be honest oxidation looks great I think I'm gonna give oh my god I'm Am I gonna be overhyping this? I think I'm gonna give for oxidation a nine because it did oxidize just a tiny little bit, but not that much. So I'm gonna give a nine. Okay, sweat resistant, fade resistant, all the resistance. You know what I'm gonna do? Tissue. Of course, I'm not gonna rub it on my face, but just let's see how this is going to look like. Wow, it does transfer just a little bit, just a little bit. A while ago, I revealed NARS Cosmetics, the natural radiant. If you didn't see, this is the link here up. And I also did the same test and with the NARS, you could really see it like really brown on the foundation. But in this case, it's okay. It's not that terrible, but still, I think I could give a seven for that because it did transfer after all, you know, and it's six hours, not even being, it is a quarter of the total wear time that they gave us. So a seven, because if it's a quarter and it transferred like that, okay, a seven. When it comes to skincare benefits, it didn't, it didn't say anything about special skincare benefit here besides the fact that it's oil control and it doesn't cause breakouts. I am gonna give a six because I think the lack of skincare benefits. It's not like hydrating my skin, it's not dehydrating my skin, but from that part, I, it doesn't 
plumbing skin, it's not anti-aging, it doesn't contain hyaluronic acids what whatsoever, so I'm gonna give a six for this. Oh, am I being a bitch? No, I'm not being a bitch. So when it comes to shades, the information that I got here is a little bit tricky because in Europe we have 48 available shades, but in US there are 55 available shades. Yes. Okay, so Surreal Skin by Mario has 30, the House Labs has 51, the Airbrush Flawless by Charlotte Tilbury has 44, the NARS Natural Radiant comes in 38 shades, so 48 shades and 55 shades, this feels very inclusive. This feels very inclusive. I'm, I have to give a 10. Okay, but is it vegan though? Well, if you go on their website, they claim to not use any animal ingredients to create their formula. Therefore, they would make them vegan. Is it a clean brand? No, it is not a clean brand. It is it cruelty free? No, it isn't cruelty free. Unfortunately, Estee Lauder has been in the Chinese market for quite a while and they got a lot of backlash when everyone figured out that they were selling in China and what would happen when a brand wants to sell their products in the Chinese market. So no, they are not cruelty free. It is for all skin types. What can I tell about this, about my own skin? Well, as I told you in the beginning of the video, I do have a T-zone with cheese lightly oilier and for all I can tell, it does control the oil well, although you saw a so I just went with the tissue on my nose that my nose was getting a little bit shiny but it's not made me feel uncomfortable while wearing this foundation I did wear other foundations before which it felt heavier and much less comfortable when it comes to price versus quality um, you would purchase this product in Europe for 49 euros and you would purchase this product in US for 48 US dollars um, consider then you have 30 ml and for that price it's quite affordable but because unfortunately it is not cruelty free it is not vegan and it is not a clean brand I will have to give a an 8 for this foundation um, but simply because the formula it is still not up to date to to the profile consumers of nowadays so for this I'm gonna give an 8 so how I'm gonna do this I'm gonna remove one of the highest scores and one of the lowest score which is going to give us an average of oh it's going to be an average of 8.42 8.42 well believe me i wish i would give a, a higher score to this foundation but it is what it is okay but now going to the final conclusions of this video would i invest in this foundation to have on my kit to be very honest if it was if it was a vegan clean cruelty free brand probably i would why because it's very compact it's very easy to to take it with you in your kit although it's glass it doesn't feel super heavy and it's not super chunky for example i did find the uh, surreal skin by makeup by mario quite chunky on the hand and quite heavy um, but this it, it feels quite lightweight would i invest this as a consumer if you don't mind investing your money into non-cruelty free non-clean brand and if you have combined skin with the t-zone and if you like high coverage with the minimal amount of products then this foundation could be for you but if it wasn't for this video i don't think i would have bought this foundation for myself because i do rather invest my money in clean cruelty free and vegan brands products in general because i'm a vegan person myself so why why would it not keep it this also on my makeup case okay do you agree with me what's your experience with this product please let me know on the comments all right all right guys this is the end of this video i hope you guys enjoy watching it as much as i enjoy making it and please remember to like and share this video because it does help with the algorithm to push my videos towards a larger audience and if you want to and believe me i would appreciate a lot 
remember to subscribe to my channel, all right? Thank you again for all your time, love and support, and I see you all in my next video. Bye!